find y prime at the point x, y equal to one comma two pi for the equation x cosine y plus sine x, y equal to one. First, we should check that our point actually lives on the graph of our equation. So we stick our point in and we wanna make sure that the equality holds up. When I do that, what do we have? We're gonna have, I put y in for cosine, so two pi goes in there, cosine two pi is equal to one, x is equal to one, first term equals one. In the second term, we're looking at sine of xy, one times two pi is two pi, sine of two pi is zero, so we have one plus zero is equal to one, that definitely holds, because this point definitely satisfies the equation. So now, I wanna find y prime. How are we gonna do that? This is the business of implicit differentiation. So the idea is, we're gonna treat y as a function of x, and then whenever I take a derivative in my equation, wherever I have a y, I have to apply the chain rule by multiplying by y prime. So, What's gonna happen then? Well, if I have two things are equal, if I take the derivative of both sides with respect to x, whatever is left over is equal. Whenever I hit a y, when I do the derivatives on each side, remember to put your y prime in for the chain rule. Then we'll need to clean up the al with algebra to get y prime by itself. The way you do that is you're gonna separate your terms by do they have a y prime in them or do they have no y prime in them? Put them on other sides of the equality, and then what we're gonna do is factor out y prime on its side, divide by whatever's left over on both sides. That gives you y prime by itself. So let's go through this. So the first step, we have two things equal. I'm gonna take the derivative with respect to x. What comes out is gonna be equal. So let's take a look. Our first term is x times cosine y. We're gonna use the product rule on this first, and then a chain rule to take care of the cosine y. So with the product rule, what are we gonna have? First, we're gonna take derivative of x with respect to x, which is one. So that's all that's left over, cosine y. Then I'm gonna add x times the derivative of cosine y. Do the derivative of cosine y, I'm gonna use the chain rule. So we're gonna cover up the y, what's the derivative of cosine? It's a minus sine. I put the y back in, and then I have to take the derivative of y, which is just y prime. We don't know what that is, that's what we're trying to solve for. So we just leave it as y prime for now. Go to my next term. I have sine of x times y. Cover up the x times y, what's the derivative of sine? That's gonna be cosine. We put the xy back in, multiply by the derivative of x times y. Okay, that's our chain rule. Derivative of x times y again is the product rule, so it's gonna be one times y plus x times y prime. I leave the y prime as it is because that's what we're trying to find. And then on the other side, derivative of one with respect to x is zero. So that's gonna be all the taking of derivatives. Now we're just left with algebra. So the first thing I wanna do is to expand, we're just gonna get rid of these parentheses here. So have everything as it is with no parentheses, nothing to collect. Next thing I need to do is separate into y prime terms, non y prime terms. So you'll notice what we'll wanna do here is, where the zero is, I'm gonna push the cosine y and the cosine xy times y. So that's gonna give me this over here. For that, what am I gonna do? On the side with the y primes, we factor out the y primes, and then we just divide by what's left over on both sides, and that's gonna leave us here, and then that's our answer for y prime. Okay, we can't stop there because we're asked to find it at a specific point, one comma two pi. So I stick that in for x and y, and then number's gonna come out. So note when I do that, what happens? Okay, remembering that cosine of two pi is one, sine of two pi is equal to zero, we're gonna be left with a minus one, minus two pi for our, our answer of y prime, and then we're done. Now, minor shortcut. At step one, once I had taken all the derivatives, I could have went and put in for the one comma two pi for x, y right there. Okay, there's no need to actually solve down to y prime in terms of a function of x and y, because since we're actually interested in a number at the end of the day, you can cut straight to your numbers as soon as you take the derivatives. So what I could do is put one and two pi into our equation for one. What's gonna happen there is, you'll note 
Okay, here we're going to get this equation off of 1, and that's a lot simpler because this term here is going to punch out the 0. You have a 1 over here. Basically, it's a little bit easier on the eyes. Okay, and you'll note when I collect things, we're just looking at our same answer of minus 1 minus 2 pi.